regime. Having determined this, the committee should also lend its support to the people of South Africa in the negotiation process. We must also emphasize that for any process of negotiation to succeed, its objectives and parameters need to be clearly defined and understood by those engaged in the process. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we are gratified that the process of peaceful negotiation is already underway in other areas of tension and conflict in our region. In Angola and in Mozambique, some positive signs of reconciliation and peace are showing, albeit under very difficult and delicate conditions. These developments will need more support and encouragement, not only from the OAU, but also from all peace-loving people around the world. Once again, Mr. Chairman, we are encouraged and gratified that you are paying so much attention to the urgent needs of our region so early in your stewardship of our continental organization. Mr. Chairman and Your Excellencies, allow me to say once again how honored we are that this meeting of the ad hoc committee is taking place in our capital. It is our great wish that its important deliberations result in bringing the hour of liberation for the oppressed in Namibia and South Africa closer and that they facilitate the development of genuine peace in our region. Mr. Chairman, once again, may I thank you for having considered our city and our country a host to this very important meeting. I thank you. Good evening and welcome to Guest of the Week program. Tonight on the show, I have a very distinguished guest with me, uh, Comrade Zephaniah Mtuping who is the president of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Uh, he is also the founder member of uh, this organization, fighting for the liberation of South Africa. Good evening and welcome to our program, Comrade Ntupi. Good evening, Comrade. And, and uh, welcome to Zimbabwe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Comrade Ntupi, uh, you are the founder member of the Pan-Africanist Congress. Correct. Uh, having broken away from the ANC Youth League, which you were together with uh, Nelson Mandela. Can you give us a brief background as to why you broke away from the ANC Youth League and founded the Pan-Africanist Congress? Well, in fact, the word break away is a misnomer because uh, we are the custodian, that is PAC, of the program of 1948, you see, program of you know, action of 1948. Then, so that now, uh, when uh, it did happen, that now the the main organization, which was ANC, was no longer uh, following that program, then uh, we decided to give organization, the organizational structure to that program so that now it could be implemented in practice. Therefore, we did not break away from ANC, but we are the rightful people who are continuing with the policy of ANC, which was uh, uh, enunciated in Bloemfontein in 1948. Mm -hmm. yeah. In a sense, you are saying, actually, the ANC broke away from the program and continue to be called ANC, and you people then yeah. had to name yourself in another manner, different yes. from the ANC, which had uh, gone out of the program that you had arranged. I, I say they deviated from it, uh -huh. yes. So what happened then when you continued now as PAC? No, well, when, when we broke away, we realized that we we're faced with a big task, and therefore, who had the duty of organizing the masses behind us. And we immediately uh, set out to uh, achieve that objective. And then uh, we organize uh, branches 
and uh, sort of regions. In fact, there were branches from all over the country. And then uh, we were preparing, we prepared for a conference which was now going to launch the organization. Fortunately for us, the majority of the youth league, especially, in fact, I can say the majority of the youth league was uh, on our side. And then uh, I think that is why we had uh, such uh, uh, resounding success in amassing the following behind us. Mm. So that now uh, the youth league, members of the youth league were actually f food men, that is where the people were actually doing the organization. So that now uh, once uh, we s struck out on our own, then the people now who were following the, the, the Africanist idea mm. and then uh, automatically, automatically found a home in, the, in our new structure. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, uh, I would want to know, the 19, 1948 program, uh, which you are saying the ANC deviated from, well, yes. you were all ANC then, did it include the notion of the armed struggle? Well, at the time, you know, it, it did not, I mean, uh, specifically uh, state, but it, it well, main, mainly at that time, people believed in passive resistance. We remember it was just immediately after India had obtained its liberation through uh, passive methods. And so that now, uh, all over, that is now freedom-loving people thought that it was possible to achieve uh, freedom through uh, passive resistance. Mm -hmm. So it did not embody the armed struggle at all. Now, when you founded the Pan-Africanist, did you then bring in this idea of armed struggle, or it was later decided at a later stage? No. We no, we did not have any idea. I mean, we did not have the armed struggle in our mind at all. And in fact, our president was doubt, I mean, was doubting it at all. I mean, because the, I mean, our late president Mangali Sosobuge was against, you know, any form of violence, and so that he did, he would not tolerate armed struggle. Now that came out later when it was shown that uh, it was impossible in Azania to conduct a struggle, and, and that is a passive uh, struggle, because you will remember later on how the government result, I mean, responded to our first action. Mm. Mm. Now, after founding the PAC, uh, I know you have, uh, you were putting in out of jail several times. Yes. Uh, tell us the, the highlights of that period that led you to be in and out of jail? Yes. Well, I've been always what we might call today an active activist, you know, and then in fact, I was in the forefront of the organization in Azania. You see, our policy in the PAC is that leaders must be in front. You can't call upon people to embark on any action which you yourself cannot carry out. In other words, leading by example. No, by actually being there, yes, by being exactly in, in on the scene of where action takes place. Now, in 1960, then, we all launched our first campaign, uh, which resulted with the massacre at Sharpville, you remember. And then, uh, uh, it is that campaign now which brought about many changes in the policy of PEC. Firstly, uh, we realized that now you cannot, as I said, have passive resistance in Azania because the government always responds violently. Uh, secondly, that campaign, its campaign, its work was to remove fear from people, from our people, that is fear for prison, and which we achieved. Mm -hmm. And the, the, respond of the, the response of the government also brought 
sidelines because they bend our the PAC and they also passed the state of emergency so that now for the first time uh, people were arrested uh, and kept in prison without trial mm. yes so we can say you uh, were one of the main architects of the Sharpeville yes I was you I were was, in the I was actively forefront in fact I organized in many uh, fronts uh, uh, and then I also there uh, organized I was among the people who also organized in Sharpeville itself mm. yes <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. Right. Uh, from Sharpeville, uh, many events took place yeah. uh, which saw you in and out of jail yes. again and so on. No. Yes. Now, we are quite, uh, you're correct. Now, after we decided now to embark on armed struggle, which was about uh, 62, I mean 1962, or you see, then we embarked, in fact, it was about 60, 61 or so, and then we embarked uh, uh, on and to, to achieve that program. And then we amassed, amassed a biggest guerrilla army in the country, which was known as Polko. Now, that, that guerrilla army, uh, uh, f fortunately for me, uh, was just started just before I came out and then then when I came out then I was the uh, the main uh, man who was in charge of it uh, see, so that now I okay, we organized you know the, the that the army uh, the, Pok the Poko army and then uh, well of course it's its uh, actions and escapades are well known yes it is the one which showed that now it was the the, the, the government uh, after all uh, was oh, was vulnerable yes mm. comrade and then yeah. i was arrested as a result of that in 1963 mm. and then so i was now among the first you now to experience na uh, detention without trials we, uh, and then they were called those during those days 90 days so i'm among the first people who under uh, uh went uh, the 90 days in 1964. Mm. yes then i was in pretoria where i was tortured yes okay comrade to ping at that point we will take a very short break yes uh, stay with us for the second part of Guests of the Week, where I'm speaking with uh, Comrade Zephaniah Tuping, uh, President of the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania. Welcome back to the second segment of Guests of the Week. I'm speaking with uh, Comrade Zephaniah Tuping, President of the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania. Uh, Comrade Tuping, uh, there is again another milestone within the struggle in South Africa. Uh, here I'm talking about the Soweto uprising of uh, June 1976. You were again out of prison and, and you led the Sharpeville situation and I'm um, meant to understand you also within the uh, Soweto uprising. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, uh, when uh I came out from prison in 1968, 67, I think, and then 68, well, I was sent uh, to exile to Korko, and then 68, I was sent home. Or at the end of 1967, I was sent home. And then, uh, well, uh, in the early 70s, right about 70s or so, uh, some students would be expelled from Fort Hare, and actually, they came to me to the, discuss their plight. And then we made arrangements of how to counter uh, that with them. And then later on in the 70s, early 70s, I'm not sure whether it was 71 or 72, the, a meeting was held in Orlando where uh, it was agreed that now they should form uh, an organization 
which was called now representing the outlook of black consciousness. And then, uh, well, I remember the president, then president, the first president of that organization, uh, who used to frequent my home. And he, in fact, uh, even before he went then to that, uh, uh, I mean, the occupied position, that position, uh, he, he was uh, always at my home. And <clears throat> so now, uh, the black consciousness movement uh, had many uh, students who were Africanists or who were members of Pan-Africanist uh, Congress uh, uh, connected with it because it was felt that now an organization which could operate above board had to be founded. So that now that is how the black consciousness movement was started. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it took off on that time. And then from then, I was associated with them closely. We, uh, we addressed very, very many meetings, including the one which took place in Durban, which resulted in the big arrest of the members of that organization, especially the many of their leadership. Mm -hmm. This is where I went into jail. They where they went to jail. I didn't go to jail for that, you see. Mm -hmm. But I, I was, I addressed that meeting, and then afterwards they decided, you see, to, to, I mean, to take action, where I mean, to celebrate the freedom of Mozambique. Mm -hmm. Then it just, it was during that action when they were arrested. How I was, did you get arrested yourself after? Uh, uh, well, it was a, a different matter now. Well, I was arrested now after the actual so way to uprising of the students. Now, I addressed meetings in many areas, and I was connected closely with the students, for instance, areas like Karisho, and we organized students uh, uh, a lot, I mean, over a very wide area in our, in our, in our Zania. And then, uh, uh, then, of course, what led to the student uh, uh, outbreak, I mean, in 1960, was the uh, problem of Africans. And then those schools which were concerned were next door to me. You see, those schools, I know the principal uh, of the school where it, it was mainly concerned was uh, my student at Orlando High. And, uh, uh, and the students there, I knew some of them there, you know, and then uh, we also had great influence amongst them, you know. And then- After, after June 76, uh, the Soweto uprising, you went into jail uh, and that was the last spell, uh, or the yes. last period that you were in jail up to last year when you yes. were released. This period, you served together with uh, Nelson Mandela at uh, Robben Island, is that? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you were discussing about these matters, your differences as ANC, PAC. You never well, got to agree? Well, we did uh, discuss uh, together. But you see, I mean, we were politicians now. We did not compare uh, the merits and demerits of any organization because we realized that that would not be uh, conducive to healthy uh, discussions. But we discussed any uh, uh, topic together. And uh, we lived in a very most amicable way together. And then what is striking is that now we used to hold uh, celebrations together. If we had uh, an important occasion, like Charleville, we would hold it together. Mm -hmm. And also, when they celebrated some of their important events, they would invite us. If we lost our uh, members or our cadres, then we would invite all the groups to come now uh, to uh, remember 
those people who lost their life in there. So, in so that you now we're working together and so forth, as that was concerned. That is now, well, even uh, we discuss even sometimes deep uh, questions, but all the time they were friendly. Mm -hmm. Although that now, well, we realize that now you cannot convert anybody there because each one of them had uh, his own ideas, you see. Yes. So, in a way, you were informed of what was happening outside? Well, later on, of course, yes. Uh, when I got there in Robben Island, uh, it was very difficult to get newspapers. We used to, s to s what was, uh, uh, get them illegally, what they call smuggle in, uh, in prison terms or a jargon, and then we used to buy some of them, giving tobacco to some prisoners which were working at Monas, that is now the police headquarters, mm -hmm. then we would get them. But by the time now, I was about to be transferred from Robben Island, we were allowed to buy newspapers officially, and then we obtained almost every newspaper because we were so many, and people now ordered the newspapers uh, at their various localities or homes, mm -hmm. and so that now, when they all arrived there, then uh, we had uh, uh, a great deal, I mean, we had uh, 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 an assortment of good collection of newspapers, mm -hmm. and so that now, uh, I think we're among the most informed yeah. Yeah. people. Now, you were released last year, yes. December last year. No, no, November. November last year. Yes. Uh, what would you say led to uh, your release from jail? What, what, did, what happened with these uh, South African authorities to, to, to release you from jail? Well, I don't know, because well, it's only Bota who can answer that question. But now, what I know is that they just released me with no conditions attached. Even the condition of uh, being asked to abandon, you know, violence was abandoned. Mm. So I don't know. Well, officially they merely said they were releasing me on humanitarian grounds because mm. I was not well. You have been ill whilst in jail. We are for a long time, you see. Mm. That's where I had a major operation. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, from there on, from the time that you were released, uh, I believe you've been trying to acquaint yourself with uh, developments, uh, political developments. Certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us? How did you see the Pan-Africanist Congress uh, performing? Yes. Well, when I came out, I had very little knowledge of what was happening, except what we had screened from the local newspapers. And, and unfortunately, local newspapers used to report very scantily about the Pan-Africanist Congress. Now, it was not until I came out from prison, and I was, firstly, I was struck by the number of people who came to welcome me. You had to be there to, to believe it, because I had crowds and crowds of people coming to welcome me, and that continued for days and days, it's even months, and then at times I had to run away from home to try and hide myself. Now, uh, then it was now during my press statement when I realized that, uh, well, uh, the organization had uh, uh, was well over, I mean, had, had uh, uh, working, I mean, was working very well. Because firstly, they were able to organize a press conference for me with, at a short notice. And at that conference, they were there physically to be seen. And, well, and then they supported me, they sang. And thirdly, the press men themselves through their questions and, and their comments, uh, made, uh, they, they, t 
told me that uh, there was now recession of PEC in Azania. But ever since I got there, I found that now we had, we were increasing in every uh, sphere, even organizationally. Now, we have very many structures now uh, which uh, have come up who are supporting the idea of uh, Africanism. You see that? Now, those, because of course they cannot uh, support PEC, it's a bent organization. So now they are really embracing an ideology of Africanism or even pan Africanism as an ideology. Mm -hmm. But now that you have out of prison, are you facing any kind of restrictions at all? No. Not at all. I was released unconditionally. Mm. Yes, up to now I'm a free man. Uh, I could go anywhere I, mm. I went. Comrade Dr. Peng, we'll take another short break. Yes. Stay with us again for the third and final segment of Gifts of the Week. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Guest of the Week. I'm speaking with uh, Comrade Zephaniah M. Tuping, President of the Pan Africanist Congress. Now, Comrade M. Tuping, uh, a lot of events have occurred, have taken place politically, uh, well, in connection with your struggle. Uh, just a few weeks ago, the ANC uh, presented proposals for negotiating with the South African regime. Uh, in Lusaka to the uh, frontline states. And the PAC also presented their own uh, proposals to continue with the armed struggle uh, during the previous meeting of the OAU ADO committee on Southern Africa. How do you view uh, these situations? Uh, well, we always have different uh, uh, programs. I think each uh, organization has its own program and its own strategy. Uh, well, I cannot speak for ANC. If they've decided uh, to uh, relent insofar as the armed struggle is concerned, it is their own concern. But now, as far as we are concerned, we have now left all options open for us. We are going to use uh, strategies which will be suitable from time to time to meet a particular uh, situation uh, in the course of the liberation movement. Mm -hmm. Now, as I say now, we have not bound ourselves to anything and we shall continue as it was before. You see, uh, I mean, we're not just, uh, well, Armed struggle is one part of the, uh, the, whole, the, way, the, way, the, the whole total struggle. Mm. That is why now I say we have left all options open to us. You are saying, or do you view the NC action uh, by presenting these proposals for, for negotiating as relenting on the part of this organization to the armed struggle? Well, I don't know that, but I'm saying if they're going to negotiate, well, it is their own affair. But now I'll state our own position. Our own position is that you cannot negotiate uh, between uh, masters and slaves. And at present, the conditions are not appropriate for negotiation because the colonial regime, that is the settler regime, is still uh, having all options. And it is the ones which still dictate even the terms of, organ, uh, of negotiations. Now, 
And I must repeat it here and emphasize it. Our conditions of negotiation is that now we are only going to negotiate on the question of the restoration of our land in Azania to the rightful owners who are the indigenous people, the Africans. Mm -hmm. This is that. You, as the PAC, uh, presented these uh, proposals for continuation of the armed struggle to the ad hoc committee on Southern Africa. Uh, how do you, how did these heads of state respond to these proposals, which were in complete difference with the previous proposals by the ANC? No, we did not uh, now advocate that they should continue with the armed struggle. We said they must continue to treat us as they treated every country along the way, I mean, to, and, until they received their uh, liberation, which automatically, I'm struggling was part of that. But we did not uh, utter the word that now the OAU must continue the struggle. But we said, do as you did in every country so far which is liberated. Azania is not an exception. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now it will be up to the OAU as to what they are going to do in the liberation of Azania. But the liberation of Azania mainly rests squarely on the people of Azania. Those are the ones which will decide how to conduct their struggle. Mm. Yes. Looking at well, of course, collaborating with OAU. Looking at the events uh, taking place in South Africa right now, yeah. uh, uh, there is the new acting president, so to speak, uh, uh, de Klerk. How do you view him as the uh, new leader of the Nationalist Party in South Africa? Well, de Klerk is not different from any other nationalist leader. He is a nationalist leader. He believes in apartheid. And uh, so far as I'm concerned, there is nothing that the clerk has said, you know, which warrants this excitement about uh, him to bring about uh, uh, change. The clerk is just as incapable to bring change as Foster, who said, give me six months, and he died uh, without <laughs> achieving, <laughs> delivering me. Yeah. And then the late, I mean, that is now the ex-president, not the late ex-president, no, it's not late, the, the ex-president, Bota, said now, uh, you know, uh, we must reform or we will be uh, destroyed. I mean, I'm just putting it in my own words, you see? And I'm not putting the exact word. But uh, in the, oh, he said now, we, we either reform or perish. And then all of course, you know what happened, although he nearly died, but uh, he, he brought very little change if there is, there is any. Declared, has just said now, as for, now a longer period than uh, uh, Mota. Mm -hmm. He has asked for five years to bring about uh, change. I suppose the people of Azania uh, must have patience now for the next five years waiting for the oppressor to decide what to do with them. Mm -hmm. But now I say here and now, the decision is among the, our people, the Africans, and they are going to continue with their program, irrespective of the clerk or any other oppressor, irrespective of the great powers, which I realize that they want now to interfere in our country. In Azania, we are not going to allow our hands to be twisted. In Azania, we are going to conduct our struggle the way we feel if it's fit and we are going to win. And I say so from experience because all the actions that we have taken are the only ones which have changed the course of Azania. And even in future, it will be the people of Azania which will change that course. And now this time, they will obtain their victory. Mm -hmm. Now, Declerc has so far seen about four 
African heads of state. This means nothing again to you. Uh, from, from what you're saying to me, there is going to be, there's nothing that is going to come out of that. Well, it doesn't matter whom he sees. Now, let us say, no outsider can influence the freedom of Azania except OAU, which is now, because that is the program of OAU, which was now decided in 1963 that the whole of Africa must be freed by piecemeal. That is one, each country one by one. Now they've reached Azania. But people, the deciding factor are the people of Azan. You can see anybody, whether he sees some of the leaders of the African states, whether he sees Margaret Thatcher, or for that matter, Gorbachev. It means nothing to us. As far as we're concerned, we are the people to conduct the struggle. And we are not tied by anybody. Please, let the world and the great powers understand now that is this is the turn of Azania to be free and the Azanian people are just as gallant and courageous as any in the whole world and they are prepared to face any odds to free themselves you could see now today our children are ready to face no sophisticated weapons with only stones. How much more now when they know that now freedom now has reached their doorstep? What will stop them now to open the doors that, that, that freedom must flow into Azania? It is the people of Azania, not anybody else, who are going to bring our, our people. And I say now, uh, here and now, that our organization, that is the PAC, is the vehicle which will lead the people of Af Azania to, that, uh, to, to achieve their freedom. Is the PAC in a position now to intensify or to increase the, the level of activity uh, to, 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 to higher? PAC, as well, if you want to understand the liberation of Azania, I mean movement in Azania, it's only, you must know uh, the history of PAC. You remember in 1960, yeah, but is it, it was prepared? People. Is it prepared to carry it on? It has always, I mean, we, from 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 the, its inception, PAC was there to free Azania, and it has not deviated to its promise, and it did not by just wait, but by deed, mm -hmm. to see that the people of Azania are free. You have also met our own president, Comrade Mugabe, here, and I believe you might, it was just a courtesy call, uh, but you, you might have discussed a few things. Uh, or yes. Can you tell us the nature of the discussion? No, it was really a courtesy call. And then, but of course, <coughs> we exchanged just a few light topics which we have rough, not serious action, but uh, our meeting was very cordial, edifying, and constructive. I'm very thankful that I met the president here. He's a man who is well vested in uh, uh, these affairs, and he's a steadfast man, and he's a man, who, a wise man, who can uh, help uh, in uh, uh, advice because of his great experience. Mm. I was very you, thankful, thankful to meet him. You intend to have another uh, serious meeting with him? Well, if it were possible, but now uh, I'm here bound by the uh, conditions of what the doctors uh, are going to say because I'm here under this instruction of the doctors who are still attending to me. Mm -hmm. Looking at your, you're talking about your health coming into being, uh, you have been ill for quite some time since yeah. prison days and so on. Do you still feel the energy to, to lead PAC uh, vigorously uh, for the foreseeable future? Well, fortunately, we have collective leadership in PAC. It is not just Mutupi. You see, if what I say, and you, you met any other PAC. By the way, we say in PAC, everybody's a leader. I can challenge you now that now, go and talk even to the least 
member, you think is the least member of PAC, he'll talk exactly this language that I'm talking. So that now it is no longer the question of Mutuping. It is now that now the people have imbibed and embraced the ideas of Africanism and ultimately of PAC. Yes, it is the people themselves now who are carrying out that, those ideas, not me, because I would not succeed. I would just be a lone individual. Mm. You have served a total of how many years in jail? Well, uh, about 20 years, I mean, including, uh, well, of course, I mean, if I, if I include the detentions mm. without trial. I've remained in prison for 20 years. Comrade to being unfortunately, time has run out. So, uh, yeah. I must thank you very much for coming on to our program tonight. I hope uh, people here have had an insight as to uh, the political situation in South Africa from the time that you, you became an activist up to... On the second week of August, starting from Monday the 8th till the 12th on Friday, will go down as one of the most memorable days never to be forgotten in the unfolding history of struggle for the total liberation of occupied Azania. The convener, who is the president of the Association of Women's Clubs,